after the interfered year. Now our most probable fears may take a holiday, and should we? Now we should. Now we should attend to the sunshine as it levers itself out of all the things that have been beautiful. Now we should go to making our country's looks look of the dog star, mundane. Now we should proceed to phasing the meadows. Now we should see to it that the smog takes note wholly of that laughter in the world for the grandfathers who feed their pigs tomatoes and cocoa. Now in summer we assume we will contrive a yawn or two around hot sausages. Now what contempt the dirty walkers of the city streets pedal for any crescent slower to wax than that stroll the esplanade vindicates. Now the weather itself is propriety and license. Now the terror of hoary growth contains the planet in idiotic miles. Now the principles of confrontation paper over our main excursions. Now the reserve of another's boulevard designates that the representation of the country be banded in fifths. Now subtle attentions dispose of themselves over and over. Now, here are those cringing years when the velocities at which our vitals are churned to grit careen. Now we are as children in a dirge. Now we sing, spirit us away from all the things that once had been told they were so very beautiful. Love Song with Eclipsed Objects Our dalliance folds a planet, as you, so as I, are separate, fumbling with collisions, some, the dough of distant substitutions, surging skies, arching fair slaughter. In our all, I will not forget how we erupted in an alphabet of alliances, a proceeding that law may be mingled with blood and gratuities of shattered vessels, where the reasons someone must have had once fail their say. Before it seemed that you belonged not but a steep pitch of engagements, you pirated your successive shapes not from the seals and urchins, but the green and khaki of the reefs bleaching in their own afterbirth. Had we capitalized suns for oceans, our diadems for sand, we might have existed angels or idols at their least. My vision swayed itself after points, the bluely fastidious heaps, the blasted stalls and staircases, tinily wild as uncovered hair. You ceased my gall, mesmerized my kidneys, suppose. How well my brinks softened in awaiting a multiplication of arrows. Our glorious carcasses and Brickwork endorse only one foundation at a turn, as though adjacency emerges an enemy flare. This arrogance disappears our parentage, covering it in hum, and our judgment is hardly to be listened beyond the profanities of children unwanting those sacrifices ebbed of their own hunger. Debts are paid to renditions collected in the dark. Infatuation arrives the moon, however tideless, blindfolding any landscape, cannot runs one mouth upon another. Autumn has plucked Eden, and in the ascendance of the hand over the heart, the head, the soil, the tree, the beasts, the legs, the clothes, the words, the shoe, these scenarios of gobbling earth, these tournaments all zeroed, we think only of tending our loyalties. A Hearth Full of Demagogues Gates of iron gild the ringing of your foreign village, chambers scented with cornmeal, no longer yours to diagram, not with rivers dreaming there in the forgotten flesh of guavas, sour as Wednesday's optimisms or a sleeping world's edge, numbered among the pink sleeves, flown glib from the morning sun. The belated uncles flowering like jeers beneath the verandas, they turn the road toward bothers. Smiles might grant some passage, mesas not lie alone, could you see the somber illumination of your gigantic fevers. 
The old things of life tower over lost convergences, yet you cannot begin to think of salvage not meeting your bootless and unspun self and drawing a drink of water from the coyote's bugle. Thanks. Stay safe out there.